painting on or with plaster is the oldest known form of painting. In fact, during the Renaissance period, painting done on plaster was considered the most revered of all art forms. The Italian word for fresh is fresco. These paintings were known as fresco paintings because the artists painted on fresh, wet plaster walls. Taking it one step further, buon fresco, or what is considered true fresco, is created by using a technique in which pigments that have been ground in water are applied to wet plaster. Of course, the most well-known example of buon fresco painting is Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. Because he was working on wet plaster, Michelangelo was only able to work on an area of the ceiling of the chapel that he could complete in one day's time. He used a wash technique to apply large areas of color, but for particular textured surfaces, such as facial hair or wood grain, he often used a broad brush with bristles that were spaced far apart, somewhat like a comb. You might think that working with wet plaster in the classroom would be a little crazy, but in this project, we'll work with plaster in small, manageable batches. First, I'm gonna mix about a half cup of plaster with water. And I'll add not only pigment to my small batches, but also various textural elements. I was taught to mix plaster this way. So I've started with water in my container and I will add plaster to it. So I'm just gonna add it kind of gently, spoon it in, and I'm waiting to see a little mountain of plaster that's gonna sit on top of the water. So there it is, it's sitting on the top, that means I've got enough plaster down there, and I will start mixing. Um, this method yields really smooth plaster with fewer air bubbles. The temperature of the water will affect the length of time before the plaster hardens. So the warmer the water, the less time you'll have to manipulate it. And sometimes that shorter hardening time can be a good thing. So I'm working on a hardboard panel. And these are nice because they're inexpensive and they're rigid enough to support the plaster without warping. But I have found that roughing it up with a little bit of coarse sandpaper will help the plaster adhere better. So I've decided to do an abstract landscape today. And I want my first layer to be this pure white plaster without any pigment added. This is going to be kind of the sky area. So the plaster can be poured on or smoothed on. You could use a trowel, a spoon, or a brush. And I can add watercolor or pigment to this plaster at any point from slightly damp all the way to bone dry. And now I'm just going to use the back of my spoon to create some movement, something that might look like a cloudscape. And for my next layer, I've mixed up a thicker plaster, and to this I've just added acrylic paint. So I added some blue and some black, because I'm thinking about kind of a smoky mountain range. So obviously this is nice and thick, because I want to be able to put this on with my, tra with my palette knife. So I'm going to just place it on. I'm going to push it right up into that top layer with my knife. At this stage, or if you've got plaster that you're applying that's as thick as this, you could also impress materials into it, like bubble wrap or burlap, and just push them onto the surface and pull them forward, pull them up. See what kind of textures you're going to get. So now I'm going to mix up the foreground. And for this method, or for this layer, I would like to add um, inclusions, so something textural. So we've got, this is barley in the tree there for texture. I've got some rice added here. This I believe is rice. You could add, you know, burlap uh, fibers, pine needles, um, sand, experiment with inclusions. So paper shreds, you know, see what, see what you think will work, what kind of textures you will get. So I'm going to thick, add the plaster to the water in this again. And I believe I'm going to add a few spoonfuls of barley. And also some pigment. So I can add some pigment to this layer as well. I'm 
So I'm gonna just pour this on. This is a little bit darker layer. I've got the barley in there. And at this point, I think I'm gonna use my toothed rib to move it around. So I'm gonna have some texture from the barley and even some interest with the linear element that I'm gonna get with these teeth on this rib. A note on cleaning, as I'm getting messy here. Um, don't ever put plaster down the sink. The easiest way is to use a plastic container, let the plaster dry thoroughly, completely, and once when you squeeze that container, it will just release from the sides of the container. So you can throw the plaster away, and then you can continue to use your plastic container over and over. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna move this one aside. I'm gonna go back to the sky portion. This is an example that I did earlier, and the plaster is completely dry on this. So if I add watercolor to a damp plaster area, you could get some halo. The, the color could migrate a little bit and leave this halo effect, which I really like, and sometimes it takes overnight to see the effect of that movement. Um, but if you want more control over the pigments, the application of the paint, or want to add detail, apply it to plaster after it's been thoroughly dry. Watercolor and plaster can be really beautiful. Um, it does lighten a bit. Now this plaster is real dry, so I am going to add a little bit of moisture before I try to move some watercolor around on it. Um, and I know that watercolor on plaster will lighten as it dries. So you can either start out using more intense color than you think you want, or you can add it in layers. So this may look really bright right now, but as it dries it will calm down a little bit. As you can see, the possibilities for working with wet plaster really are endless. Start with a centuries-old technique and try to make it your own. For a materials list and PDF of this lesson plan, please visit dickblick.com.